Today, I want to talk about what my day looks like as a software engineer. More specifically, in this video, I'll show you how my workday goes on one specific day and follow it up by taking you along for the ride with me to show you what I did on that day outside of work. I will then wrap up the video by talking a bit more about what actually goes on on an average day. So without any further ado, let's begin. On a typical day, I would wake up around 9.30 a.m. But since this day is not typical, I ended up waking up earlier than that at 8.30 a.m. since I have something that I want to do right after work. However, that does not change the fact that I still do the same thing in the morning. I make coffee and go have a shower. That routine to start the day takes about half an hour. So by around 9 a.m. I finally grab a cup of coffee and settle into my home office to work. The first 20 to 30 minutes of any given workday is taken up by catching up to emails and messages on Google Chat, reading the news, and creating a loose plan of what I want to get done during the day. Since I was pulled away by other tasks all week, the first task I'm doing today is attempting to replicate an issue in our code base from within the test environment. This is a little challenging since this is the first time working in this part of the code base, and I lack the domain knowledge necessary to fully understand how the underlying code works. In other words, this task is a lot of trial and error, along with exploration of our testing infrastructure to try and make our code fail under certain conditions. This is the first task I have set for myself to be able to fix an issue reported to us by an entirely separate team. After all, how can I verify that I fixed the issue when we have no tests to detect if the issue even exists? I did get lucky that with the help I received on Monday, I managed to get the test to work as intended in about an hour and a half. Since the expected interaction of the test currently causes an assert to trigger, I finally have access to a proper core file, meaning that for the next hour and a half before lunch, I got to explore the program in GDB and plan out the fix a little bit. At around noon is when I take my lunch break. Nothing super fancy actually happens during lunch. I just grab some food and usually watch something on YouTube, chat with some friends, or plan out what I'll want to do after work a bit more. I mean, nothing particularly interesting happens at this time, so let's move on. Today at 1pm, I am attending our internal C++ users group, effectively a meeting for people that want to learn more about features of modern C++ and discuss it with other people that are interested in it. After all, the majority of our product code is written in modern C++, so this meeting is a good way to learn something that we could turn around and use right away. However, with the meeting over, I have a full hour and a half before the next one. So for the first hour, I ended up continuing what I was doing just before lunch, meaning more time spent in GDB and our code search tool to figure out how to integrate a version of the fix I'm thinking of implementing. At the end of the hour, I started to work on my report for the meeting that will happen next. For this meeting, I looked through the results of the testing that ran on my pull request, analyzing what extra tests may need to be run and what tests I would want to rerun. I actually write what I will talk about on paper as it's a good way to organize my thoughts before the meeting. Now at 3.30 PM, I have my last meeting of the day, and this one is what most people will consider more usual. This is a sync meeting for the main project I'm working on at the moment with all the people that work on it. We get to provide a quick update on what we're doing and have any discussion that needs to be done with everyone present. Since everyone working on the project is in attendance, it is also a good time to ask for other people's input on quick issues that concern us, such as getting design clarifications, suggestions for additional testing to run on a feature implementation, and whatever else may be useful to discuss together synchronously. As you can tell, there is a lot of me sitting around just looking at a screen all day. But that isn't really all that surprising given that I work as a software engineer. All right, I just finished my meeting and it's around 4.30s. And since I don't have anything that I can really do in just 30 minutes today, I guess I'm done for the day. Now that the workday is done, I get to do whatever I want. As I alluded to a couple times before, I wanted to do something right after work, so let's get going. I wanted to visit a specific place in downtown Vancouver today, grab something to eat, and just walk around Coal Harbor. The SkyTrain ride to downtown Vancouver from where I live takes about half an hour, and it is a good opportunity to listen to music and unwind from the workday. I like leaving home right after work, 
and I try to do it most days, even if I do not do it every day. So what is the specific place in downtown Vancouver that I want to visit? Well, let me introduce you to this cool service. It is this hip centralized location where you can temporarily borrow movies, games, music and books along with a built-in quiet co-working area. It is all the rage for university students. And the best thing? If you return things on time, it's basically free. <laughs> I'm obviously talking about a library, more specifically the Vancouver Public Library in downtown Vancouver. I have been meaning to start reading more books before I go to bed every night to try and improve my sleep hygiene, and since books are expensive, libraries are awesome for that purpose. And this library is beautiful too, so that's a solid added bonus. This time around I decided to grab a copy of The Naked Sun by Isaac Asimov, since I liked The Caves of Steel when I read it a while back, and I generally like science fiction. I did want to check out Roadside Picnic by Arkady and Boris Strugatsky, but it was not available this time around. Anyways, I'm hungry, so let me show you a cool place I like in this area. Since I grew up in the Middle East, having the possibility to grab some proper Lebanese food is real nice. There is this cool place called Zatar Wazait on 531 Granville Street, and it has an almost identical menu to what you will see in Dubai. And while it might not taste exactly the same, it is damn close and absolutely delicious. I will be honest here, with the rather rapid rise of coronavirus cases in British Columbia lately, I'd not feel too comfortable eating in a crowded place indoors, so instead I grabbed my food to go and went to the seawall water walk in Coal Harbor to eat. It's a really pretty area to just sit around and look out at the water. I did walk around a bit as well after I finished eating and went home, as I still have some things to do at home today. So I made my way home, taking the SkyTrain back. And again, the SkyTrain ride home provides a great opportunity to just listen to music and relax. Now that I got home and it's dark out, I can do the last thing I wanted to get done today. What is that thing? I get to record this video. So let's get on with the last section of this video, shall we? Now that you got a glimpse into a specific day of mine following me around both during and after work as a software engineer, I simply have to talk about what actually happens on average. After all, you can't expect each day to look like today did, right? So first things first, let's quickly talk about what an average workday looks like for me. Normally I work from 10am to 6pm with an hour long lunch in the middle, and I typically have about 4 to 6 hours of meetings a week. And just like today, I often do not work all the way until 6, it's just on average that I work until 6. Most of the time I leave maybe 15 to 40 minutes early, especially if I finish a task and have that much time left in the day. I simply do not have all that much busy work that I can occupy that little time with, and if I start another task, it'll take me at least 30 minutes to really focus on it properly before I have a solid 30 to 40 minutes of concentrated work. This means that I would have to both work overtime and I would not be able to relax well after work either, as it takes some time after you finish doing concentrated work before you can truly relax and decompress. However, in order to be fair, if I do not notice what time it is, I just let myself work until I want to stop. This sometimes means that if I get really into solving some fun problem, I can get lost and work until 8 or sometimes even 10 pm. This happens rather rarely and I tend to take the following day easy, but it also balances out my working hours in a way that is fair in my opinion. After all, the managers care only that we attend the meetings where our attendance is actually needed and that we produce roughly 40 hours worth of work in a week. The specific hours you do the work in and how many hours it takes you to do it in does not matter that much. Also, some of you may have noticed, I do not have all that many meetings and this is because I'm not pulled into too many useless meetings. Additionally, we do not do daily stand-ups in our team as they are not super necessary to keep things going if the team is self-motivated. Anyways, moving on from work, I would just like to quickly mention this, the average day is a lot less exciting than what I showed you today. Most of the time I just go on a quick walk in the area, then chat with friends, listen to music, watch some YouTube or a show, or just browse Reddit. I also make dinner almost every night and do whatever errands I have remaining. Another thing I do during my time off from work is work on my own hobbies. The main hobby at the moment being making YouTube videos. So I will spend a significant amount of time thinking about what video to make and writing the script for that video. Then every other week I will record the video from the script, edit it and post it on the weekend. Since we're on this topic, consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. Either way, 
I also occasionally do some CS related reading, but that does not happen super often. As an example, I have been meaning to start a reading group covering this textbook on queuing theory and performance modeling from more Harkel Bolter at work, but I need to plan it out ahead of time and I'm letting myself settle in properly first before starting that. Anyways, I think that I have given you plenty of insight into what a day in my life as a software engineer looks like, so let's wrap up the video. So, in this video I showed you what my day looks like as a software engineer. I started by showing you what my day looks like at work, then followed that up by showing you what I did on a specific day after work. I then wrapped up the discussion by talking about what an average day actually looks like, as I only showed you a specific day that was partially designed to be interesting to watch. Can't blame me for not wanting to show you just a regular boring day, can you? So. If you found this video particularly interesting, useful, or insightful, then please let me know in the comments that you did, and while you're there, consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. Anyway, it's getting pretty late in the day, and I got this cool book to read before going to bed, so I want to get to that right away. Thank you for your time. Bye.